Good morning, Grade Sevens. How are you this morning? Um, oh, could you hear me there? I hope so. Um, I hope you're all well. It's Friday. I'm so happy it's Friday. Tomorrow we're sleeping in. Um, and today we're going to do a very, very nice lesson. I absolutely have a passion for writing and for literature. But today we're going to focus on the writing process. And we're going to look at general terminology and some hints. Then what we call the five W's. Then the structure of an, a proper writing piece. And then we're going to look at a rubric. Now I'm going to prepare you in advance. The rubric is aimed at a high school student. But because you are very close to high school, I think it's better now that we look at that rubric. So I put in a, in a I, I did put in a general um, rubric. So we're going to look at that. Um, so then let's start with, with the lesson. First of all, writing is the painting of the voice. Guys, writing is a creative process and a creative um, activity, just like painting. And it's always said so beautifully when we say we paint with words. So when you are writing something, remember to paint with words. Now we're looking at important hints. And before we start here, think of a time when you had to write an essay or a letter or something like that. Now, what I'm going to teach you today is applicable to that. So we're going to look at the structure, we're going to look at how you plan and everything. And then on Monday's lesson, we are going to look at the different types of essays we get. For the purpose of this lesson, and of course, Monday's lesson, I want you to only think of essays now. Later this year, I'm going to teach all my classes, my grade seven, eights, and nines, how to write proper letters and everything, because in all the grades, it will be the same. That's why I'm also teaching you this lesson. So um, you must stop me if it's a bit too difficult or something, but I'm sure that you guys can cope with this. Um, so let us then start. When writing an essay, it is very important, first of all, to plan. Guys, you cannot start writing just like that because then you will make mistakes and then it won't make any sense. You may think it will make the world sense for you when you read it, but when that teacher sits and marks it, it's not gonna be that much fun to, to mark and it's not gonna be something that he or she understands very well. And therefore, planning is key. That shall you help om een idee te krijgen van wat je wil schrijven. So it's very important then, if you plan, you will know what to write. Then, the second um, aspect here. Lees jou vraag duidelik. Dit is belangrijk dat jy verstaan en weet wat jou van jou verwag word. Guys, if you get that exam paper and it's paper 3 and it means you have to write something, go through the entire paper. Make sure you understand what is expected of you before you just choose something. After that, then you choose the topic that you want to do and the type of essay you're going to write. Now, sometimes in the exam, the teacher may say um, that you must write a descriptive essay, for instance, about this topic. Then you don't have a choice. Then you must write a descriptive essay. But sometimes you have the option to choose from different themes and topics and from different writing um, pieces that you can do. Now, my personal favorite essay is an um, argumentative essay, but we'll get to that um, on Monday. But then also, I love a Verhalende essay, and an, uh, which is called a narrative essay, because you, you can tell a story here. But to get back to this planning, you see, I'm already going on and on and on about writing. It's because I love it so much. So, besluit wat er thema en type opstel jy gaan skryf. You choose the theme and the topic and what type of essay you're going to write. Then, Jy moet besluit vir wie jy skryf en wat die doel van die tekst is. Remember now, now you've chosen, you've read the paper, you've chosen your topic and you, you, you're starting to think now, for who am I writing this? Am I writing this for people, um, for teenagers? Am I writing this for elder people? Am I writing this for, for parents? Is it newsworthy or is it a, a, for those who seek adventure? In other words, before you start writing, you must think of the target audience and, of course, the purpose of the text, guys. That's important. And now, you can always plan via a cop card, as we say, which is a mind map. 
then a spinnacop diagram, which is a, a spider chart, and then call pinter, which is bullet points. Okay, so that's ways of, um, of planning. And then, now I, I said this to the other classes as well the other day. I've been teaching now for, um, for eight years. And I've been teaching now for grade 10 to 12 uh, for five years. Now, I I'm um, a home language teacher by, by, um, by uh, Beroep. So one of my matrix papers in the past, so matrix students usually write essays, if it's a home language, of about 400 to 450 words. And that will be indicated in the paper. So it will say, okay, you must write an essay um, of, um, of 400 to 450 words. Now guys, that is a lot. Luckily for you in grade seven, it is, it's absolutely, um, it's, it's not expected of you to write something. And also because this is not your home language, I'll never make the word count so big for you guys. So the point of me telling you the story is sometimes in a paper, um, um, you will, um, you will, you must um, actually, they give you a word count to follow. So they will say you must write it in 120 words or 150 words. So they say here, Dink on who long this scribe stick mood vs. In other words, you are, are you going to have to see what, what is the expectations in, in terms of length for your essay. And if they don't give it to you, then you must plan, okay, I'm going to write 10 paragraphs or I'm going to write 150 words. Choma Pele, you are shocking me. Your grade seven, your teacher gives you more than 450, 400 words. Yo, 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 that's, that's a lot, ne? Sure. Okay, I won't do that to you. Then, gebruik die five W's in die H. Ons bespreek later in die les. So later in this lesson, I'll tell you what the five W's and um, the H is. So for now, all I want you to do is, Gomapeli, first of all, to count for us till five. And then you must take a picture, kiddies. Take a picture, please. Okay, can I go on? Yes, yes, count it till five. Now, also part of the planning process, the, this stuff you must remember when you write an essay. First of all, and this is such an important slide, I want you to put everything down, to open your ears and to listen and to promise me that from this day forward, if you ever write an essay, you will follow these steps. After you've planned, and by means of a chart now or a bullet points or whatever, then you're going to start writing what we call a first draft, a eerste weergave. You cannot just plan and then write the final. Nee, nee, nee. Jy moet beplan, dan jou eerste weergave en dan jou final. So now you've written your first draft. Dan gaan jy en jy gaan jou skryfstuk redigeer, in other words, edit. Then you are going to edit your text. Now, editing means you can make veranderinge waar nodig is. So, you can look at your schrijfstuk. Will I a name verander? Will I a event verander? What will I wil verander? What will I better make? So, in other words, editing, you're going to change stuff here and there if you feel it is necessary. Maybe you see a sentence construction which is not correct, or you want to change the character's name, or you want to change certain events in the story. That is when you edit. So after you've edited, then we do what we call redigeer, ach, um, then we do what, you, what we call proofleers, which is proofreading. Dis wanneer jy gaan kyk vir taal en spelling en lees en skryftekens en sinskonstruksie. In other words, you will be looking at punctuation language um, and, and spelling and then also sentence constructions. Now I can tell you, in the years that I've been teaching, I can absolutely by first glance see when a child didn't edit or proofread his text. And also, um, you must always, and I'm going to say this for the very last time, maybe not even, plan first draft, last draft, ne? La, um, final. You never, ever, 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 ever just start writing. Okay, so first 
plan. Second, first draft. Third, edit. Four, proofread. And only then you can write your final. So, write neatly and concise. Nekis enan also leesbar. Guys, please. Um, if I write, if I, I'm now a teacher and I've got 30 essays to mark and now I get to your essay and you didn't give me good handwriting. Now, I know we're not all blessed with proper handwriting, but we can all try. So if I sit there 12 o'clock in the evening and I start um, marking your essay and I can't understand what you've written here and your handwriting is not nice and um, it looked like you um, frommeled your papier up and it's terrible, it's unneat, then I immediately get angry and then I'm not in the good emotional state when I mark your paper. <laughs> And um, I have to sit there with um, binoculars or something to actually see what you've been writing. So no, 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 no. Always re um, think of the reader as well. Ne neatly written pieces. And then use creative talgebruik, guys. Let op woord cases. In other words, use rhetorical elements such as idioms and uh, personification and metaphors. Be creative in your essay, guys. I can't emphasize that enough. And then there's an aspect which we will discuss later in the, um, the this writing um, process. is called navelsing. Ne? Um, that, that refers to research. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but ma'am, when we get a test, then I don't have my iPad or the internet or something. I understand. But that is why it's important to have a general knowledge of things. Like me, I like reading the news. Even if it's a topic like finances, I don't like reading on finances. It doesn't interest me. However, I push myself to sometimes read that because maybe in a conversation, I may need something like that to talk about. And when I was in school, I would push myself to read something like that because maybe there is an essay or a discussion or a debate that we must have about finances and then I maybe know some terminology. Um, so that is what I'm trying to say. Do research. Um, even before you go to the exam, maybe there's something that you can link to a topic. Okay, take a picture. Now, Boy Pelu, I just want to read here. Boy Pelu said they give us more. Yo! Ma'am, when our handwriting is unneed, we go to the grade R, 1 and R class. I like that teacher, Goma Pele. So she sends you back to grade R and 1 if your handwriting is terrible. I think that is a good idea. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing so much. <laughs> Guys, teachers are unique creatures, eh? <laughs> okay, Goma Pele, did you count till five? No, man, you must count. It's your, it's your job in this class is to count. Is it not funny if your teachers send you back to grade R and 1? I think it's very funny. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go on. If you were in my class, I would have probably done the same. Okay, <laughs> let's go on. Okay, let's go back to planning. Now we rewind the video. And you've got your paper in front of you and you've chosen a topic. Now you're asking yourself, how am I supposed to start planning? This is how you start. First of all, you maybe take your hand and you put your hand on the on the paper and you draw um, the lines of your hands on the piece of paper and you start at your uh, at your pinky and you write V of who and in that sentence underneath you say hier moet jy identificeer oor wie jy skryf maar dit hoef nie altyd a mens te wees in other words when you plan and you tell me who is in the story you can then say this, this is the person, maybe Jan or Kuis, and um, he's a doctor or an architect. And you don't have to, uh, it doesn't really have to be a person. It can also be a dog or a, or a door or something like that. So that is the first thing. The second thing is, what or what? And this is what I, what I say right here. Wie, or wat het die wie gedoen of tegenkom? What did the who do or encounter? What happened in the story? Then, waar of where? Op wat er plek hier die gebeure plaas gevind? Bijvoorbeeld een dorp of een stad. So where did it happen? On the moon, on Mars, on the sun. I wouldn't want to go there. Where did it happen? Waarom of why did it happen? 
So, wat is die rede of die doel vir die tekst wat geskryf is? Is it there to make you um, um, nosy about something? Um, or is it there to give information or news? So guys, take a picture. This is very important. So that's, that's the, f the first um, the parts that you can maybe look at. That's the part of the planning process. Thank you, Goma Pele. And now we go to the last part, which refers to the hukum of why. Now, just go back there. Waarom? This, will, this indicates why you are writing the text. Is it there to make somebody nosy? Ne? Now, hukum. This is, where, um, this is where we identify why did the events in the story take place. So, for instance, waarom het die gebeur plaasgevind? So, for instance, there was an explosion, a bomb went off, because somebody pressed the wrong button. So who come? Because somebody pressed the wrong button. Okay. Um, the girl's teeth got knocked out by a hockey ball. Why? Because she stood in the wrong place. Or because somebody wanted to get back at her for something. So there is the example. Ne? So please take a picture. I think you should count all three with this one. It's a very short one. Okay, my Pelly didn't count. I think he's busy taking a photo. So I'm, oh, 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 oh. Okay, they're just saying there that the five W's and the H is something you can plan on a mind map, but we'll get there. Right, now you've planned your essay and now we're going to start writing the first draft. And guys, this is important. The structure of a writing piece. First of all, you write a title. Not the question. No, 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 no. You don't use the question as your title. Uh-uh. You look at the question, you read the question, you understand the question, and you make up your own title. Okay? Then, for the, for the purpose of this lesson, I said we're going to focus on essays. So, I'm just repeating myself again there, just like a true teacher. Een opstel behoort gestructureerd te wees, guys. So, any essay or any writing piece for that matter should be structured. Ondou altijd een titel. Jou eie titel. Write in paragraphs. Yes, I've encountered papers before. I promise you, where the, the child started with a capital letter, he wrote on two pages, just like that without any punctuation and at the end of the essay you put a full stop that was his entire essay no paragraphs no punctuation if you really read that essay and you and you and you remember why we use punctuation for breathing and so on if i read that essay without breathing i would have died i'm telling you so guys Remember, writing paragraphs, it's, it's part of the, uh, the thinking process. It is also part of making your reader actually want to read more. Uh, it's not uh, making your reader anxious to see this huge paragraph. Um, and it's also, it makes, it ma use punctuation, guys, really, really, really. And now, take a picture. Ach, nee, man, kijk nou wat doen ek. Take a picture there, please. Okay, I'm going on. Now, you've written your title. Now we go to the introduction or the inleiding in Afrikaans. Eerste dinge eerste. Dit is die belangrijkste deel van die opstel. Dit moet die leesers se aandag trek. It's the most important part of the essay. It must grab the reader's attention. Absolutely. You don't want to lose your reader in the first paragraph. So, um, in Monday's um, uh, PowerPoint, I'm going to give you a few examples of how the inleiding looks, for instance. But you must remember that a, a inleiding should grab the reader's attention. So you, you, must, you must write it in such a way that the reader wants to read more. They are intrigued by what you are writing. 
Dan sê ek hier so die norm is dat de inleiding nie langer as vijf sinne behoort te wees nie. The norm or the of rule, of, uh, rule is that um, uh, introduction should not be more than five sentences. So yes, it can be one sentence or two or three sentences, but not longer than five sentences. Okay. And then, guys, open your ears. Please, 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 please. Do not ever, especially when you're in high school, start the essay with the following. Eendag lang, lang gelede. Or start with ek. Or start with to. Of en. Of ek wil jylle graag vertel. Guys, I'm going to say this in the nicest way ever. I don't care. <laughs> okay. No, you do not ever write an essay like you're starting a fairy tale. You don't start the essay like um, you, you're trying to, to, to give your opinion in the very first introduction. I don't, you're not spe doing a speech, so you're not going to say, ek wil jylle graag vertel. Please do not do that, guys. Start something, um, I'll show you on Monday how some of those essays are started. So just start with something interesting. I immediately lose attention when somebody starts writing an essay with one of those phrases or words. So please do not ever do that. Take a picture. Goma Pili, you must count, please. Goma Pili, are you there? I'm worried about you. Okay, then I'm going on. Now, you've written your title, your introduction. Now you start writing the body of the essay. That is the actual essay. A rule or a guideline. One idea per paragraph. So if you're going to write how the person looks or the character looks, you're going to probably do that in one paragraph. So one paragraph for, for instance, how the person is looking. Each of the paragraphs has got a main idea. And then gedachten of ideas wat die hoofgedachte ondersteun. So then there's going to be ideas um, that support the main idea. So for instance, um, you write about how the person looks. So dan kan jy sê, hy likes soos a weerwolf. And then you describe how the weerwolf looks. Hairy and ugly yellow teeth. And he's smelly and something like that. Nee. Then, the third bullet point. Paragraphen moet verskillende lengtes wees. Paragraphs must be different lengths. Goed maar, Pelly. Uh, okay, I'm going back for you. Is it this one? Take a picture. Okay. Tell me when we can go on, please. Thank you. Okay, so different length paragraphs. That's um, so maybe you write a one sentence paragraph or two or three or five sentence paragraphs. And then this is also important. Guys, remember that you must have a logical essay, um, well structured. So ideas should build on each other on a lo logical way. Do not write long sentences. Guys, the moment your sentence is too long, then the meaning of the sentence disappears. The moment the reader, that's, that's also a rule that I can teach you. If, you. if you read your sentence once, then you know it's more or less okay. But if you have to read your sentence two or three times, then there's something wrong with that essay. So usually when I wrote a piece uh, essay in school, I would swap my essay with a friend's essay and I would read hers and edit hers and she would do the same for me. So, um, because you don't always see your own mistakes. That's why I say try to not write long sentences because um, it is much, um, it's, it's unlikely that your sentence may be too wrong if you write a, um, a shorter sentence. Okay, I think that is everything on this slide. No, let op lees en skryfteken gebruik. Again, Capital letters, full stops, exclamations, so on and so forth. You want to write with proper punctuation. Okay. And take a picture, count all five. One, two, three, four, five. Goma Pelli, now that I see you all there, will you please count for us?
Okay, so it means I can go on. Thank you, Juma Peli. Um, <laughs> okay, now you've, you've written your essay. Now we go to the closing paragraph. Guys, a few things to remember. Also, you want to grab the reader's attention. Summarizing, summarize. So this is something, and, and maybe you remember it one day when you are in university, you must remember this actually. When you write an essay, whether it is a strong academic essay or a, or a narrative essay in school, you must always remember your introduction and your closing paragraph works together. So it sort of starts the argument in the, in the introduction, then you argue, and then at the end, you, you, you summarize everything. So the track, you must describe that the readers the aandacht track, and that must all samvat. And then key, must nie nieuwe inlichting in die paragraaf sit nie. No new information in the paragraph, on the slot paragraph. Oh, please guys, you don't want to put something in the slot paragraph that is certain, that is all of a sudden new information. Mm -mm. Because then you're leaving your, your, um, your, um, your reader with questions that's not answered. So you just take everything and you make it, uh, to, you put everything together in your summary. And now you take a picture. Okay. Okay, so then we are going on. So I got this study guide pro, uh, provided from, uh, to us from the government um, on the internet. And they had a summary in here. You'll see I took a screenshot from how a opstyle should look. First of all, um, they didn't put a title in there, but you now must learn from me always your own title. Then an introduction, um, and it's just repeating here. Um, it must grab the attention of the reader. Kort en bondig, short and sweet. Lichaam, it must have the content of the, of the um, opstel. Paragrafe, a hoofgedachte en ondersteunende the supporting ideas. Then the ending, it moet die leeser gelukkig maak eindelijk. Nee, so nie altyd nie. But if you write a, a slot paragraph, guys, it must be... Um, written that the, that the reader is surprised or um, it sort of has a, a good feeling emotion in the end. It must all the thoughts bring. So everything should be connected in the, um, in the slot paragraph. And remember again, no new information. Okay, take a picture. Okay, and then we go on. Jochum on Pelis on account is all 10. Thank you. Okay, now we get to Naaforsing, research. So I've done some research when I obviously made this PowerPoint. That's why you should, that's also something you should remember. Whenever you do a, a um, talk or a, a, a task or something, you must do research. Ne? Okay, so on this link here, Netwerk 24, a lady gave us information on how to plan an essay. This lady's name is Marilee Swanepoel. She's a very um, well-known Afrikaans first additional language teacher. And she's got a beautiful website and everything. So she gave Netwerk 24 this example. So when you write the Verhollende Opstel, which is a narrative essay, you can plan it like this. Now, this is what I said to you with the five W's. You put your hand there, you draw the, land, uh, the lines of your hand, and you write, for instance, V and Vanner and Var and Wat. Ne? So you actually write, um, you plan your essay via this way. And this, uh, you use keywords, ne? And look here, two court ideas. Underneath each of this, you can actually write two short sentences just to explain. And take a picture. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going on. Then the next one, also from her research here. Um, this is a, a way in which you can write a descriptive of a beschreiving the obstacle. So you know this is your senses, your uh, smelling sense, you see, you hear, your touch, your, your, your taste sense. Nee. So in other words, this person went and she used magazines and she pasted um, an eye and an ear and so on and so forth. And then she wrote the, the type of sense that is next to the picture. And then that she started or he started planning the essay. So in other words, what did the character see? What did he or she see? What did they hear? So on so forth okay so then that's also a way of planning your essay i'm going to count till five then you must have taken this picture one two three four and five and now i'm going on okay now this is the part that i wanted to get to today which is very very important now guys this is where you must quickly take a, a breath sit up straight focus so not all the time, but sometimes teacher will, teachers will give you a question and then along with the question, they will perhaps provide you with a rubric. If not, um, this is now what you should remember. So in my, I usually try to give a rubric to my students and then I would explain the rubric to them. So look at this rubric here. This is the way in which your essay is marked. So this is a high school rubric. So I'm, I'm focusing on, on the future here, so you must listen. So when I mark, uh, um, according to, to our, um, uh, like CAPS now, CAPS is the, the, the way in which we teach in South Africa, we've got a seven code system. Zero to 29% is code one, and then it goes on up until code seven, which means you've had 80 to 100% for your, for your task. Now, and the second line, there's the marks that you get. If you get between zero and nine and a half, then you've got, uh, for this um, section, then you've got zero to 29% for this section. So that's just a quick explanation. Now this essay is marked in terms of unautumber planning, which is content and planning for 32 marks. Then, tall style redigering, so it's language style and then editing, um, which is 12 marks and then structure for six marks. Now guys, I'm only gonna focus on code one and code seven. Say for instance, I mark your essay and I looked at the content and the way you plan. Content referring to what you, you wrote about in your, in your essay. For instance, you wrote an essay on um, the moon and, and made of cheese and somebody's living there. Um, so, and you wrote a very interesting essay uh, about that, then I would mark you for content there. Um, so it was an interesting content, for instance. And then your planning, did you plan via um, a mind map or a spider chart, for instance? And then did you write your first draft and then your final? So those three things. So say for instance, Look at this, the inhoud niet ter saken in. Ander woorde, you wrote about something else and not the topic. Your ideas is at all and you're repeating yourself too much. Or you didn't plan and it's a terrible essay, <laughs> then you will get zero to nine and a half percent. That means, oh, zero to 29 percent, that means that you got less than 10 out of 32 for, for that part. And that's the part that counts the most. So for instance, you got 26 to 32 marks out of 32. It means that as a reader, I thought your essay was very good. I found it intriguing. Um, you, you, you had good ideas and you had a, um, a almost um, a grown up viewpoint on things. You, you just didn't look at it um, from one side. You planned and you edited your essay. Then you will get that. My, in my opinion, guys, and that's just my opinion, try to aim for code four and up. Never go underneath the code four, especially for, for your entire essay. After that, we look at tall style and redigering. Now that counts 12 marks. If you get zero to three and a half out of 12, it means you didn't look at your um, language aspects. You didn't look at punctu punctuation. Your word choices were not good. Um, you didn't have proper style and your essay was, has so much um, 
problems in this this um, you've made a lot of mistakes and you didn't fix it that's why planning is so important if you have 20, um, 10 to 12 marks out of 12 it means that you had very good language usage that you use figurative language and punctuation that you've perhaps used something like idioms or rhetorical elements good style um, you did proofreading and editing Okay, then the last one from six marks, uh, we look at structure. Now here, most children think, ah, you know, six marks is nothing. But I promise you, one mark can, can um, indicate whether you have 50% or not. So every little mark counts. If you have zero to one and a half out of six, it means that you didn't write about the topic at all, that all your language aspects um, were not kept in consider or kept in consideration. Your, your sentence construction, your paragraphs, everything weren't correct, um, and your length is terrible. You wrote too short or too long. If you have between five to six out of six, it means that you um your um your topic was good and it was um, full of um you used your imagination good proper sentences and you wrote according to the length that was expected of you so this children is a rubric the golden rule go for a code four and up and i almost want to say code five and up okay so that is the rubric quickly can i have an indication if you all understood this because i want to get to your test on monday quickly before i go on are you guys all fine? Do you understand this? Okay. Now, pens and papers. Write down the following. Your test on Monday. So I have heard that you've already started with your, your, um, your tasks and, and assessments. So apparently you guys know that you go onto the website, you click onto the link, uh, link and then you'll find your, um, your um, task there. So your task for Monday, and I want you all to focus. You must go and study all your um, woordsoorten. Now remember, you actually do the test at your, um, in your home. Um, so you are going to have access to all your um, bronner, to all your resources. The focus will be on, you must do a comprehension. Then focus on um, something like tell woorden, for instance. Uh, I would like you guys to focus on voegwoorde, uh, selfstandige naamwoorde, then your gedig, which is tienerwees, and then of course, um, in general advertisements, um, I'm going to put your visual literacy. Now, um, Guys, all your PowerPoints have been uploaded in, on the drive. So you can have a look at those stuff there. Please remember that just because I've written some key aspects here, this is not all your test is consisting of. There is probably bijwoorde and bijvoeglijke naamwoorde. That's why I say, go study all your woordsoorte. Go study... Um, the, ex the exact uh, the visual literacy where we did the advertisement and the comic strip. Go and study that poem. You only did that one poem, so study the poem. And then on Tuesday, I will mark it with you. So Monday will be a normal lesson. Then at home, you're going to do your assessment. Tuesday, we'll be marking it. Do you all understand? I want to hear yeses and I want you all to say yes, ma'am, so that I know you've listened to me. Okay. All right. Last thing before I go on, we'll do this activity that I wanted to do on Monday. This is the link to the drive. There's, that's where you will find all of your PowerPoints and everything that you need for the test. There is my email. I will be on standby this weekend. If you struggle with the concept, then you email me and you ask me, ma'am, I struggle with, for instance, selfstandige naamwoorde, and I will try my very best to explain it to you in an email. So please make sure that you understand your work and that you actually go and study through the weekend your Afrikaans. Because remember, I always say, it's not your first language. We are well aware of that. 
So because it's not your first language, you have to put so much more effort in it. Like me with English, it wasn't my, well, it isn't my first language. So I actually had to go and study for it. Okay. So there's the drive, there's the email. What do I always say? Oh, grade seven, I heard apparently from Monday, you are on a holiday again up for two weeks. So I hope to see all of you here um, for classes that we can do our revision. Eh? So masks on, sanitize your hands and take care. Goodbye.